Today I want to talk about this amazing painting, Leaving Church by John Singer Sargent, and why it really changed my view on the world around us and subject matter choice by great masters and a lot of painters out there. I have discussed this a little bit on my video, uh, Finding Beauty on the Ordinary. I'll have a link in the description so you can check that out. Uh, but definitely this place, it's what started this whole line of thought uh, and reflection on uh, what it means uh, to really look the world around us. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a geo uh, guesser kind of situation because I was able to track down this the, the point where this was painted. So we'll jump on Google Earth uh, and take a look. Uh, the links will be also in the description so you can check out the place for yourself. Maybe even do a, a sketch uh, virtual planner kind of thing on your own. Uh, and share uh, your your thoughts and what you've learned in the comments. Uh, this painting was done in 1882. Uh, the artist was around 26 years old and it was his second trip to Venice, Italy for a painting season. This final painting was probably done uh, in his studio, but he did a preliminary sketch uh, in watercolor uh, that was probably done on location, on plain air. Uh, so it's really interesting and I had the pleasure to go there uh, and be where uh, he stood, not exactly where he stood, as I think this was done from a gondola uh, or painting inside a boat. Sargent used to do a lot of that, painting the canals, painting like big landmarks in the city, as well as uh, small details such as this one or other parts of Venice that I'll definitely get back to uh, in other videos. So if we look at the preliminary sketch, we can see that a lot of uh, the questions uh, and solutions, visual solutions, uh, were already answered uh, in here. Uh, we can jump back and forth. Uh, and if we l use uh, the lines, the horizon that go to the horizon, the vanishing lines uh, that go to, to the vanishing points, we can definitely see, and I, I've explained this in another video about understanding perspective using a door, uh, drawing a door. Uh, the link will be in the description as well. Uh, we can definitely see that his eye level was almost close to the ground. So that's another uh, clue that points out that he did the, the painting inside a boat. And, and we'll take a look. Uh, we'll jump into Google Earth uh, in a second. We can do the same here uh, and even find a little bit of the relationship on the heights of the, the people. Uh, this one, uh, potentially, he, he was even sitting down. My first assumption was that he was sitting down, but looking at uh, the Google Maps, I, I really think that he went uh, and, and, and painted from the boat. If we jump right in there, uh, we can see that um, in here. So if we jump back and forth, we can see that that's exactly the location and a lot uh, has remained the same. Uh, it changed the colors and, and some, some things have been renovated to some extent, uh, but a lot of that is still in there. Uh, and we can look around here uh, and see that there are even other interesting landmarks that he could have uh, chosen, uh, such as this bridge, or even that tower from uh, the church of San Cantiano. This is the Piazza or Campo San Cantiano. Uh, so he could have chosen a lot of different things. You can see the canals in here, and, and he did paint a lot of the canals. Uh, so from inside the boat, we can see that the, the relationship with the painting is really uh, almost one-to-one. -one. That's why I really feel that he painted this from inside the boat. Jumping back to the painting and especially to the watercolor sketch that he did, uh, two things, interesting things come to mind. The first is that this painting uh, is currently uh, untraced, so it's lost. Uh, no one knows if that still exists, if someone has that on their drawer uh, at 
some place or a private owner uh, hasn't disclosed this. So if you own this, if you have that on that old collection from your grandma, uh, it's probably worth uh, some money uh, and more than that, worth putting it in a museum so it can be preserved uh, and treated the way it should to resist uh, the test of time. The other interesting point, uh, thing I want to point out is that Sargent painted uh, using some gadgets, uh, and this is one of them, uh, sketching uh, umbrellas uh, and staffs. I'll add a link in the description for a post uh, by James Gurney describing this process. Uh, and as he was inside a boat, probably some something close to the, uh, the picture we're seeing in the screen, he couldn't fix the staff or the umbrella to the ground so he tied down uh, that to his leg so he could have the right amount of light right amount of sun uh, so he could see the colors and values in a in a clear uh, and uh, direct way and one last thing I want to point out before jumping to Campo San Agnesi, another beautiful place uh, in Venice, is to align your expectations when you're traveling because you can get to this point that was the one place that I was mostly anticipating uh, and it was completely uh, filled with a lot of construction uh, and even uh, this kind of pathways that they make when the water level uh, rises. Uh, so it wasn't the best experience. It was amazing to be there uh, and really being able to, to experience that and feel how Sargent might have felt being there uh, 140, almost 130 uh, years ago. Uh, but it was definitely frustrating to find it uh, this way. So jumping to uh, the final uh, thing I want to say here, this is another watercolor uh, from a private collection as well. Uh, this is a beautiful painting, uh, but if we find the place as well, we'll see that it's also really beautiful and we can do a lot of sketches both going there if you have the opportunity to go there or also uh, using google maps google earth uh, and really understand a little more of that area uh, and so on if we jump back and forth again uh, on google maps we can see uh, that this place has changed a little bit it was probably renovated so i'll, I'll zoom a little bit so we can see two doors with two windows uh, in the middle uh, we can definitely see the same in there uh, it didn't have the middle windows uh, in there uh, but the rest uh, is pretty much uh, the same even uh, the ornaments uh, the architectural ornaments in the windows up there uh, are pretty much uh, the same uh, also uh, some of the other windows we can see that in uh, those entrances that we have uh, to the canal so those go straight to the canal so this is a beautiful place uh, great to to look as well uh, this is a place I, I had the pleasure also of visiting uh, and uh, experiencing that so it was overall a great experience to really feel uh, that I was in the same place as a uh, sergeant. I did do uh, some sketches here and there, uh, but not exactly from those places, as uh, it's pretty tiring to, to walk around uh, and all, and time was limited. So I would love to do a, a full season, painting season, as sergeant was able to do, and stay like three, four months in a place uh, to really experience that through your uh, pencil and watercolor sketches and turn that into amazing paintings uh, in the studio later on. So uh, I'll leave all links uh, for this, as I said, in the description below. Uh, so you can really experience that uh, as well as much as we can. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this journey to a different place in Venice. If you do visit or uh, take a selfie there, uh, please let me know uh, in the comments below. I hope to see you all in another video and thanks for watching. Have a great one.